What's happening, everybody? This is Adi from Gate 7 International rolling solo again today, but it's a great day to be able to talk about Olympiacos. Before we get started with some of the post-match content, don't forget to check in. If you're listening in, if you're tuning in right now, ch check in right now. Tell us where you're tuning in from. We love to see where you guys are listening from. We love to see how far and wide this red and white community has uh, reached to. Don't forget also to like and subscribe. We have less than 100 subs as of right this second before we get to 4K on YouTube. Huge goal for us. And we also have, I think, last I checked, less than 10 on Instagram to hit 7,000. So if you don't follow us already, please give us a follow on those platforms. And when we hit that 1,000 follower, 1,000 subscriber milestone on whichever platform it is, we also do giveaways. So when we hit... 7,000 on Instagram, which is very close. We will be doing a giveaway, and then we will do another giveaway when we hit 4,000 on YouTube. The giveaways this time, there's merch coming. You guys have been waiting for it. We've teased it here and there, but it's ready to go. We're all set. We fixed our issues with the international shipping as well. So we are super excited for this, and we are going to blast off with the merch once we hit 7,000 on Instagram. We will do our first giveaways there. I really think you guys are going to like it. Got some right here, some Gate 7 merch you can see right here. Very excited, engraved. You can get your name just about on everything too. We're super pumped for this. This took a long time to set up, and we're excited to share all of it with you today. So, so pumped. We're going we're gonna to share everything with you guys. You're going to see everything, and I hope you like it as much as we do. And lastly, if you are listening on audio, uh, whether it's a live listen or whether you're listening on another platform, please leave us a review as well. Five stars, whatever, anything that helps us get more activity in the algorithm so we can continue to find more red and white fans. Lastly, you can also support us on Patreon. The Patreon WhatsApp group is just getting massive and it's literally taken a life on its own. We say this all the time. So much fun to be in there. Um, we also will make fun of each other with AI or rather I'm the one that does that, but it's all good fun. Promise there's plenty of fun to be had in that Patreon group. So check it out for a dollar a month. You can join it. We share some information, statistics that we don't always share on social media or th we don't share publicly. At least you can also get extra content as well as a some merchandise from the merchandise tier, which is coming out very, very soon. So you can support us on Patreon if you would like and join the Patreon community. There's a man of the match poll that's live. So cast your vote. I see a bunch of you have already started. So excited to see uh, where your opinions lie with that. We always get to the man of the match uh, coaches grade at the end of the show. So get your votes in. And I'll probably open the lines up because it gets boring to talk by yourself. So we'll do that. If you want to join me and chat, we can do that. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking until I run out of stuff to talk about. So let's get to it, boys and girls. Let's get to some of the post-match content. Libyakos get a huge 5-1 to victory against La Mia. Demolition. Goals from Jovetic, El Kabi, and Yusef El Arabi. El Kabi is going to end up with only one goal on the night. The second goal actually counted as an own goal from Kidakos Papadopoulos. So, unfortunately for him, <laughs> but we don't care as long as as long as we're getting the win. Uh, Achilleas Bales chiming in here. Did you see the Van Ship Masterclass earlier? How can we? How we cannot win those Freiburg guys? They are a circus. We were a circus in the beginning of the season. So let's. Well, maybe the beginning towards the middle of the season, I should say. So that doesn't say much. But yes, I saw that Van Ship disaster class. Six nothing getting crushed by Feyenoord. Not gonna talk any more about Van Ship than I already have in my life. So he's taken up too much space uh from speaking. But getting it is hysterical either way, though. But getting back to Libyakos things, the the win for tonight brings us to minus four from the top of the table. The Ike Bauk draw really was probably the best case scenario for us was them drawing. And we're good, we're we're now that much closer to the top again. It's th this is a an extremely tight race, and it's very exciting. 
you know, the, the loss against Ike, everyone thought the playoffs were over. Even I was kind of mentally accepting that everything was done, but two wins back to back and some poor, you know, Ike ends up with, uh, they lose to Bonathan Hikos and now they draw against Pauk and we're back in it again. So now we don't have to really worry about too much about playoff football because we're going to play both legs, both of our quarterfinal legs against Fenerbahce before we end up matching up again against Balk. And we are going to have two matches against Balk, basically. So we have two plus one more against Lamia, and then we cycle back through the rest of uh, um, Adis, Panathinaikos, and Ike. So it's going to get crazier as we continue through it and we're not even halfway done the playoffs yet so uh it's the absurdity has has so so much further so much further to go a couple of comments uh coming in here we have from Ilios, we were the medrano circus until mendy came that's yeah we were until mendy libar came this was what it circus even is is not a way to put it it was just something else Two years of chaos and whatever nonsense we've been witnessing. Fethanos, would you take Poyet over Mendy Libar? Come on, buddy. <laughs> Danielle Nero Jaffrey, Hearts fan. I hope we get you in the Europa League or Conference League next season. Always love matching up against anybody. I, I hope that happens too. And then Tute Latute, very interesting to see how Fenner play after these two weeks. Absolutely, guys. And and we'll do a little bit about Fenerbahce later on in the show. But, I mean, there is just so much drama going on over there. If you guys remember, they had the match against Trabzonspor where the fans uh, stormed the pitch. And they're now griping about things with Galatasaray. They wouldn't play the cup game. They wanted their cup game postponed. It did not get postponed. Then I saw they fielded basically a team of, like, U19s basically because they didn't want to they wanted their their players fresh for the game against us in the conference league but then they just walked them off the match that was the last thing I saw they walked them off after they got scored on by Icardi and yeah it, this is uh I don't even know how to explain Turkey is apparently a lot more interesting and as crazy as we think Greece is getting as chaotic as Greek football is the Turkish league this season has been trying to show us up every step of the way referees getting punched by owners man what a what a time to be alive what a time to be alive when it comes to Turkish football but getting back to post match with the demolition we saw here today I'm not really going to focus on tactics um I do I do want to bring up, though, that this match was a hell of a lot easier than I ever expected it to be. I mean, maybe it's just because I've been conditioned the last couple of years into just expecting the worst. And then, you know, we had the loss against La Mia under Carvajal. Like, oh my God. We, 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 we hired Carvajal. Every time I say that, it's just, it, and I see what's been happening now. I just can't believe we hired that guy. But we had the loss against them. We all know how it is playing against La Mia, especially away. That that pitch is garbage, especially when it's when it's bad conditions. But it's 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 just one of those things where I I really was was not expecting an easy match today, and we we just we just blew them out of the park. It wasn't wasn't even close. And it's also great to see very very solid performances when we had absences of some very important players don't we didn't have fortunis today he was rested we didn't have david Carmel. we didn't have chiquinho but dense was suspended he had the the yellow card suspension he was serving and then whatever you want to say about ortega he wasn't available either so we were missing a lot of players so everybody else kind of stepping up and playing and playing as well as as we did today it's a good sign it's a good sign of things moving forward also, it's great to see El Kabi. It was great to see him put his, his penalty away. You know, he lost the second goal that I talked about before. 27 goals on the season for him. And you guys saw in the blog that I wrote, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. I did write, I wrote a little piece about El Kabi and I went into the data to talk about his finishing statistics because there's a lot that we say about El Kabi. We all have the same shared frustrations. And I decided to just put the numbers there and see if the numbers matched what, what we've all been saying. And in a way they do, but in a way they don't. 
in a big way. In fact, to my surprise, if we look at if we look at some of the data, the the data tells us that on a whole, as a finisher, El Kabi may actually be a better finisher than even Yusef El Arabi. So you can check out the blog. It's on our website. It's gate7intl.com. You can check it out there. We've also posted it on our socials, so you can see links there. Click it and check it out. Look at the data for yourself. I mean, any way you put it, whether it's by whether it's by total number, whether it's by uh, goals per minute, whether it's looking at goal conversion, shot on target percentage. I mean, even even goals as a measure of per touch per opportunity in the penalty area. He has the best data, better than any player in Greece. Finishing, we're talking about, not overall, because I know some people are going to get mad at me. Finishing, he is the best. Compared to Youssef El Arabi, finishing-wise, surprised me better. Now, I'm not saying that he is a better player than Youssef El Arabi, because remember, Youssef El Arabi, especially in the first two years he was with us, was good for seven, eight assists, and El Kabi has zero. El Kabi offers you almost zero in build up, which is a lot different than Youssef El Arabi, obviously. But the point is, Ayub El Kabi, for as much as he frustrates us all with how many opportunities he misses and, and you know, uh, the sitters that he misses while he's out there scoring, again, he's scoring bicycle kicks, what have you, he is still probably the best finisher we've had in the modern era. Crazy to say. Crazy to say. But if we're looking at the data, highest goal conversion, especially since he came back from AFCON, highest number of goals as a measure of touches in the penalty area, best shot on target percentage, overall over 58%. And if we're just looking since Mendy Libar got here, it's almost 70%. Craziness. And here's another statistic for you. When he gets a shot on target, when, as long as he gets his shots on target, Ayub El Kabi, now this is before today, of course. I didn't include this. This was a calculation I did yesterday. Before today, as long as El Kabi can get his shots on target, he will score almost 60% of the time. That is absurd. This is absurdity. And this, this, doesn't, this, this doesn't mean, doesn't take away from the frustrations that we all have, but it should bring a little bit more into perspective that maybe maybe some of us have taken Ayub El Kabi a little bit for granted. Not every striker can score everything. And Youssef El Arabi also had his doozies too. Not to mention the number of times that Youssef El Arabi would be called off sides. Something that's happened recently a lot more with El Kabi. But fact of the matter is, El Kabi is doing a great job as a finisher. That is what we wanted. That is what we need. And he is doing it. He's not going to provide seven, eight assists. During during a season, El Arabi used to do that. El Kabi doesn't do that. El Kabi's not going to give you much in build up, but he is right now scoring goals. Before Afcon, El Kabi was not good. It wasn't. It was not a good situation. It was really bad. He had the lowest goal conversion of of the scores in Greece. Of of he was outside even the top fifteen, which is not good. Uh, the top fifteen goal scorers in in Greece, not good. But since Afcon, he's been a different beast different beast and flying form and we need him continuing his scoring form going into Fenerbahce so that's the whole point I want to make with this with uh Ayub El Kabi trust me uh I've already had some people they they some people have just told me they refuse to believe that they refuse to believe that he's the best goal scorer or the best that we've had this is the data that's it there's nothing else. There's nothing. There's nothing else I can say about it. So we just take it for as it is and we move on. Uh, Lefterios Machinis, El Arabi was a better player than El Kabi, but right now it's another story. Ah, oh, we're not talking about today's El Arabi, which he, today's El Arabi, you know what you get from him. Uh, I mean, it's a he. He's not what he was for us in the first two seasons. Hell, even season three. But it is what it is, and we. It, 
you know, we accept it and we work around it. So very happy for it. And now we're just going to continue with it. We're just going to continue with it. Dimitris K, you guys were really tough, tough with him unduly, in my opinion. We were really tough with him. I mean, because he was missing a lot. Um, until until he returned from AFCON, actually. Until he returned from AFCON, then he started having great performances. And I think we've been pretty positive on him since then. This is how it is with this type of striker. You score, you're great. You don't score, especially if you don't offer anything else. You're only as good as the goals that that come that that come. Helios, he scored like nine goals before the end of September. Then I was talking about how good he is, so he went quiet for like months, not saying anything about him now. Yeah, but but, but this is this was it. I mean, he scored. I mean, it was like it, we we were kind of talking about the similarities between. Um, oh my God, Miguel Guerrero did did great until September ended. Then nothing. Now Ayub Al Kabi, of course, did nothing for a couple of months, and then. Now he's come back since AFCON, and he's, I mean, he's a different beast. Plus, he still does plenty of off-the-ball work for us. So, it's, we need him to keep this up. Keep this up, especially, especially in this, in this Fenerbahce match. Now, moving on from El Kabi, I, I was disappointed today with Omar Richards, um, you know, uh, not going to make a mountain out of a mole here, molehill here because we won five to one, but I didn't think he was that great. Uh, I expect more from a player that has his credentials. I He's going to have games like that for us. He literally just recovered from injury and he's just started playing for us semi regularly. I am not necessarily going to be too upset with him or too critical of him, but I just didn't think he was that great today. Along the same lines, I also have some concerns with Masuras, who I thought was, he wasn't like bad today, but he wasn't great either. And Masuras' form has definitely dipped a bit, especially under since Mendy Libar arrived, because Masuras was such an important part of this team, starting every game, being used constantly. And since Mendy Libar arrived, he really, outside of the first couple of matches, he really has not been super involved we've talked about the fact that he does not represent the type of winger that Mendilibar prefers to use I mean you look at when when I did the analysis of Mendilibar when he came in and his tactics the the position that's kind of afforded the most flexibility and creativity is the wings for him Masuras isn't like that type of player that's going to take advantage of that not like a Fortunis not like a Podence he's we've talked about so many times what Masuras is he is not an out-and-out -out winger. He is a forward that plays wide, literally. Great runs behind the defender, but do not think this guy's going to beat defenders one-on-one. -on -one. Th that's just how he is. And for Mendilibar, that type of player is more likely to be used behind the striker than he is as a winger. And right now you have Stevan Jovetic, who is playing extremely well. Guys, the quick quick aside here. Steven Jovetic has 10 goal contributions for this club, right? It's got, I think it was like six goals, four assists. And has played less than 900 minutes. Less than 900 minutes. And he's got 10 goal contributions for this club. And he was used very sporadically before Mendy Libar came. So think about that. It, the, the the production from him is crazy. So you have a guy like Jovetic that's playing like this. When Andre Horta's healthy, of course, he's going to be the one that's playing in that midfield trio behind the striker because he's just an incredible player. He's a class player. So that's kind of left Masuras, you know, as, as long as you have those guys, Fortunis or Podence are healthy, Masuras isn't seeing the pitch. And I really wonder if that lack of minutes has been impacting him, especially after he just came off of such an important streak for, for the ethnic Omada, for the Greek national team. Um, comment here, donation from Eleftherios Marginis. Uh, keep up your great work, my man, Ari from Kalimnos. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. The, the, the donation is, we always say when you guys donate, it all goes right back into the show. We get nothing out of this. Uh, the only thing we do is we take this 
we take this and we put it towards giving you a better product. That's all we want to do is try to make better content for you. And we do that, whether it's via socials or via the live show, we're always looking for ways to make this a, a much better experience for everybody involved, because that's, that's what this is about. I mean, this platform, we say by the fans for the fans and we mean it. This is, this is a platform where we are, we are all fans here and we are all looking for the same thing. We love Olympiacos and we are all just trying to follow the club that we love together. So th that's what it's all about. So thank you guys so much for the support. Lefetti, thank you so much, buddy, for, for the donation. We really appreciate it. Now, Lefetti, really quick, because I don't remember if this was, I don't remember where in Greece you said you were from. Are you f saying you're saying this from Kalimno or are you just because you know I'm from Kalimno? Just, just clarify that for me real quick to make sure I'm getting the context of that, that comment right. Um, from Yaya Yorgadis. Uh, thank you, buddy. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We 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 really appreciate it. I from the bottom of my heart and the bottom of the hearts of the of the boys, we we appreciate every single one of you. You guys are what makes Gate Seven or what make Gate Seven International great. It's this community and it's all of you together that make this what it is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't done so already, there's a, over 130 people in here right now and an additional 100 that have already passed through the show before that. So hit that like and subscribe because I only saw like 20 likes. Hit that like button. If you're watching on Twitter or X, whatever you prefer to call it now, consider checking it out on YouTube because you can interact a little bit better on YouTube. You can also get reminders of when we go live on YouTube. So consider checking it out. Consider subscribing on YouTube as well. Uh, the It's a little bit more accessible and it's probably a little bit better of an experience for you if you're joining on YouTube than if you're just tuning in X. Either way, we appreciate it wherever you're tuning in from, whether it's X, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, doesn't matter. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for being a part of this. Please give us that like. And if you're listening on audio, leave us that review. Give us that five star if you could. Moving back on to other things, we're going to check out some more of the comments. I uh, see there's a lot of comments here. Some some individuals from Scotland uh, checking in here. Um, I just love seeing the international community that's just come together here. It's absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. This is this is what it's all about, guys. But we were talking about Masuras before. Moving on from Masuras now. We're looking ahead to, to Fenerbahce. We're going to look real quick ahead of that. And you know what, actually, why don't we do this? Before we start talking about Fenerbahce, we can get the man of the match and the coaches great out of the way. Um, eh, actually, we'll save it till the end because there's we're only 24 minutes in here and not everybody's had a chance to vote. We've gotten quite a few votes already. I think I know how this is going to end. But we'll talk a little bit about Fenerbahce. So now during the week, of course, guys, I'm going to give some little bit more analysis into Fenerbahce. We're going to do some opponent analysis like I always do. And um, it's this team is not the beast that we dealt with. And we've said that a few times before. This Fenerbahce is different and it's more dangerous. Older, they are a little bit on the older side, but they've got some very important goal scorers. And I'm not just talking about guys like Edin Dzeko or Dusan Tadic. It is a team that can hit you and punch you hard, but they're a little bit slower. So we're going to try and do some pre-match later in the week, maybe even bring some experts from the Turkish League. In the past, we've spoken to uh, Turkish sportscaster uh, Reza Nyetic, and she's very knowledgeable. Uh, she's literally a sports show host for, for the Turkish League. Very knowledgeable in Turkish football. And maybe if we can get her on board and talk to her again, that would be that would be pretty incredible also. Ah, Lefteri, that's right. You know what, buddy? I do remember this. I do remember this. Um, because your mother was Swedish and your dad is also from Kalino. I do remember this. And But that was a long time ago. It's crazy to think about when you were back here when when we didn't even have a hundred subs we were just starting moving from a podcast audio here god blast from the past blast from the past but anyway getting back to 
getting back to the 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 Fenerbahce analysis, they have guys that can hit you, and they've got talent. Are they past their prime? Like my co-host Dimitri said, yes, they are. But they still have they still have talent on the team. It's not going to be a team. They, I mean, it's I don't want to say it's in shambles. They're they're going through controversy. They're dealing with a lot, but that's not going to make them. It's not going to make them any more, any easier than than before. This is a more difficult proposition now. They're fighting for first place with Galatasaray. The quality on the team is better than what we faced. I think that was two seasons ago uh, when we beat them in, in both in in Istanbul and then when we beat them again in uh, in Greece. But our team is also different too. Our team is also playing right now better than that team was playing, in my opinion. So it's it's going to be it's going to be a, a very interesting match. I don't think I don't know how much I think Mendelibar is going to change from how how we've been playing so far. I don't know if he's going to even change the lineup that much. There were comments that he made because he had talked about Retzos in one of his post match comments, and he talked about kind of how how he's sticking with Retos and why he sticks with Retos because even though people get on Retos about mistakes here and there, he looks at Retos as full 90, full 90 minutes and he sees a lot of value in the 90 minutes performances that Retos gives. So I don't think we're going to see too much, too much different. Uh, don't forget. We don't have Daniel Pudence for this first game. He's going to be suspended. So I, I, I really believe that we're going to see, this is probably when we'll see more Masuras. I think Masuras will be very, very valuable against this Fenerbahce team with his runs. And with how slow they are, I think Masuras is going to have some opportunities. He's going to get in behind them. A um, uh, question here from Alibiakos Rebel Dominators. Will Jovetic play against Fenerbahce? I prefer his play than Masuris, Masuras or Costas Fortunis. I, I'll be honest with you, I could see Jovetic not starting. I could see him coming as an impact sub, especially since Masuras can last 90 minutes and he can run for 90 minutes. This is the type of context where Masuras is usually very successful. The concern is that Masuras' form right now is not that good. That's the concern. So I believe, I believe that we'll see Masuras probably play more and Jovetic will be that impact sub coming on and will probably end up terrorizing them as they get, as they get better, as they get more into the, into the match. <laughs> Can you bring that Rez, resin Yetish is the, is the, was the Turkish lady, the sportscaster that we had brought on before. Uh, now, if you remember what she said about Zimer Butuzzi, she she talked about his his ability, but she also talked about off the field issues that she believed were the cause of him having such poor form and um, and and resulting in in issues of him not playing. Anywho, um, but if we can bring her on again, we we'd love to have her. She's very knowledgeable, especially on on all things Turkish football. Question here from Ahira Mazda question about doy and the take on the doy situation guys the doy situation i think it's a little bit unfair how he's treated the doy situation is is i understand i understand why why in in this respect it's unfair i, I understand why you say that uh, especially because of the context he was brought in, but under Michel, he did a job. He's young. We know he's a bit of a hothead, especially in the locker room. So, but right now, I mean, who do you who do you play Doy over? If if we're seriously talking about him, whether or not he gets minutes, who do you play? Who do you play Andres Doy over? And at the same now, our thing is we've said this on this show constantly. We see value in Doy as a six. Don't understand why he's not used there, but Doy's a player that we probably end up selling for a few million. I don't think. 
I, I don't I, it's I, I'm thinking about the future that I see Andres Doy in here at this club. And I just don't see a future for him at center back. And if that's all he is going to play as, I I I wonder if it's better to sell him. Because guys, don't forget, we have Kalogeropoulos coming back, who in my opinion is a better center back anyway than Andreas Doy. Not to mention Kalogeropoulos is better, is very good in the air. And we've had problems in the air, defensively especially, whether it's set pieces or in the run of play. We're bad in the air this year, not as, or not as good as, as we were previously. Um, over Biancon, uh, Ahira Mazda's back saying he prefers him over Biancon. Biancon is a is another interesting one for me, but I'm not gonna. Um, I don't know. I, I have very mixed opinions on him. I have very mixed opinions on 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 the Biancon situation. Dimitris K, Adi, I disagree here. Doi just isn't good enough, mate, and no point giving him minutes if he's not here in the long term. I, Dimitri, I actually, I, I don't think you and I really disagree there. My my issues with Doi defensively as a center back, I think he's he gets a little too over aggressive. He gets caught positionally so much. I mean, we've seen we've seen him get turned on because he gets too sucked in. Lambros talked about it. I've talked about it. Costas talked about it, and. I'd rather sell you. I'd rather sell you, man. I'd rather sell the guy. Rather is what I, what I mean. So the me that I don't think you and I really disagree that much. I mean, just the way I see it is, I'm just trying to think in like the pecking order. Once Galugeropoulos comes back, like I value Galugeropoulos more so than than I do a guy like a guy like Doy currently. I see value in Doy as a six especially considering how how little depth we have there but nobody no I don't think I, but nobody's used him that way and Doy definitely doesn't care he's going to play where he's told that's just how he is so anyway I don't uh it, the, the situation is going to be interesting but I see this kid getting sold and that's a win either way if he gets sold that's a win he came out of the academy you make a few million on him that's good business that's good business. Not everybody's going to be a, not every player that comes out of the academy is going to be a slam dunk. And it doesn't need to be. It doesn't. As long as you you get somebody, you're, you're making these little sales here. Those are wins. Remember that. These are wins from a development perspective. From AD 1993, thank you so much for the donation, buddy. Love the podcast, guys. Always wanted some form of coverage for Libyakos while living in the UK. Hopefully, this can bring me some luck for Thursday against Fenerbahce. Pame Olibiakos, Bada Olibiakara. AD, thank you so much, man. If you're if you're just finding us, I, I feel like I've seen you in here before. I don't think you just found us, but. If you're just finding us or you're recently finding us, thank you so much for tuning in, buddy. We're so happy to find more and more people and just continue to grow the red and white community. It's it's always amazing. It's always it's always incredible to see how much this this community grows. And it's it makes me speechless every time. And we're about to hit 7,000 on Instagram, like I told you guys earlier. We're Less than 100 away here. I'll check and see if that's changed. We were less than 100 when we started from 4K. We, the, I never expected this personally that, that we would even get to this point. I never expected we'd get a thousand people that cared about what we had to say, let alone 4,000 subscribers and what's over 15,000 across social media. I never expected that. So it means a lot to us. It means a lot to me. I can say that personally, and I know it means a lot to the rest of the guys. We we love it. We love every second of it, and we love all of you being a part of it. With, there's no us without you. This is by the fans for the fans, period. So I don't see any other any other comment. Oh, here was uh, this was the one I was looking for from Alex Androsism. Your take on Abby today. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't really paying too much attention to to Abby. When I do my watch, my second watch through, I'll have to go through it. But I'll be honest, like I I really wasn't paying attention to him. Um, he 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 had a lot of touches. I remember. I just I really didn't pay attention to him today. And you bringing this up, I mean, I I remember I I do remember him having a handful of interceptions. 
I, I remember him take uh, you know stopping a couple of people. But this is this games like this aren't really where I judge a player like like Abby. If I could see him playing against better competition, I think it's a better uh, it's a it's a better litmus test if that's if that's um, uh, a better way to explain it of of where he stands. Because so far, I mean, I like I like him. I mean, this guy is a physical specimen. I think he is hands down probably one of the most physically gifted, physically capable players. In, in Greece, period. We knew that when he came down. So it's, it's I I think he's a player that'll come good for us. But I'm curious what his career trajectory will be, because I'm not necessarily personally convinced that he's sticking around Libyakos very long. I th I think he's too good to be personally in Greece. And he, at such a young age, you can see that already. Libyakos rebel dominators again. Doy's position is most DM more. Defensive mid, then center defense. I would like to check him, uh, but and also resting. I say, I think we would agree with you, buddy. Everybody on this show would agree with you. I mean, we we all see value in him as a six because he's got pretty decent ball playing capability. So I don't see I don't see why he couldn't do it personally, personally. And and I know that the that the other guys on the show would agree with me there too. So. But no coach has ever really done it except in preseason we saw it. We saw Martinez do it, and that was it. But since then, nobody has tried it. And it's just with such little – it just seems like such an easy thing to do, especially when you have such little depth in the defensive mid position. You really have Santiago Esa, and that's it. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how the future holds in that respect for Doy, and we'll see what happens. Uh, Daniel. Who's your best player? We're going to get into that because we're going to get into we're going to get into man of the match coaches grade if you're referring to best player as far as the match is concerned. Well, boys and girls, we are getting about 40 minutes in. I'm rolling solo. It's not too much to talk about when you dominate somebody. We're going to spend more time during the week, as I mentioned, talking about Fenerbahce. We're going to talk more. I always discuss tactics. I do a lot of, I'll watch a lot of their matches. I'll watch a lot of plays, see where things are going, give us a better idea of kind of what we can expect. So check that out on socials. I will be doing all of that uh, for, for everything. I'll be talking about what I see from the coaches, the type of play, pressing intensity, um, uh, and all of that. So comment from Lucky's Gavalas. Um, Lucky, I brought that up earlier. Uh, Doy has apparently had some off-field issues was the comment. And yeah, that's what we brought up. Um, it's just, it's, you know, unfortunately we, we don't have, uh, we get some insight. We, you know, there's, there's people that we talk to that are on the ground that we've, we've had conversations with and they've all kind of said the same thing. So it's, it's one of those, it's one of those things. Uh, Zoe Moskonas, you think that we could use the same duo up front against Fenerbahce? Are you talking about today, uh, Jovetic and El Kabi? I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. And my answer to that would be, I and people have different um, people have different philosophies about this, but my preference would be no. My preference would be because especially without Podence, and remember, guys, our European squad doesn't have all of our new players in it. My preference would be to save Jovetic as a super sub. That's my preference. I would rather have Masuras, uh, pro, you know, uh, Cosas Fortunis on the wing. And then if Orta is available, I'm playing Orta as, as the 10 ish in that 4 3 3 if he's the one that's getting further forward. So I think it's going to be that. And and really, Mendenibar hasn't really changed since the second leg of Ferenc Varos. We haven't changed the starting 11, really. It and it'll probably be the same, but Masuras will start. Uh, actually, River here, River is. Uh, I think River here is right on point. I think I think this is probably what it's going to be, because guys, he Mendy Libar hasn't changed ever since the second leg of Ferenc Varos. Like it hasn't really changed, and he and he doesn't always change philosophies i mean he's changed more in some respects than than i ever expected him to but he doesn't change much he's a he's a he's a simple manager he's not going to outthink himself here and i think he's just going to stick with it what he does about man marking schemes and things like that i don't know but i don't think that's going to change much either 
he'll probably focus on, of course, some of the, you know, like guys like Ed and Jekko, Dusan Tadic, and how to how to maybe stop them in our final third. But other than that, it's not going to change that much. And that's not because I, I want him to do that. That's just what I've seen. So, but I there's just no way Andre Horta does not start this game. He's healthy. He's amazing. You have to play him. You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice, but for sure, Jovetic will be a bench option coming in to cause to cause some havoc. Uh, Dimitris K, reason Doy not used as a defensive miss because he lacks creativity going forward. You need that from a CDM when playing against Greek teams. I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, Doy, again, not talking about off-field issues, I don't think that's the reason he wouldn't play defensive mid because it's not like Santiago Heze is the most creative either. Um, how many key passes or 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 creative final third passes do you see Santiago as having? Not many. He moves the ball around well, and that's all you need your your defensive mid to do, really. As long as he can dish the ball out well and he can hold it well, that's okay. I don't think I I, I don't think that's the case with Doy. I think there's other issues. Um, I. I think there's other issues. I don't think it's necessarily that he's not creative. Not for a DM, at least. Let's see. Some other comments here. We'll get to a couple more, then we'll do man of the match coaches grade, and we'll get start wrapping up here. Um, Zoe Smoshkonas is Richards in the European squad. I think he is. I, I thought he was rushed into it, and he was injured the whole time. He should be. But I'll double-check that. I'm pretty sure he is. Lockies Gavalas, if Fenner are not explosive and strong, we have a good chance. Um, what do you mean by explosive and strong? Like fast? They get forward well into the final third? Is that what you mean? Because I don't I didn't I don't think they're fast. They've got they've got talent, but some of these guys are older. I think we're faster. But I uh if you, I don't know what you mean by explosive. Like explosive on the counter, explosive in open play, fast. Because when I think explosive, like I think a team that really gets forward very quick, they move the ball fast. That's that's kind of what I think of. And I wouldn't say Fenerbahce are very. Um, I wouldn't think about. I wouldn't think about that. Or I should say, I w I don't think that Fenerbahce is explosive like that. Let me be a little bit clear. Um, from Yaya Jurgadis. I remember how good Iraklis FC used to be in the old days. Fantastic club, especially with Hadzi Panayis. I do remember Iraklis being around. Now, Hadzi Panayis, I think, was a little bit before my time. Um, or I was really, or at least I was very young, maybe when he was still playing. But I mean, Hadzi Panayis is by many is considered to be probably the best Greek footballer to ever exist. So I watch plenty of those. I watch plenty of those highlights of that guy. Absurd. Absurdity. Uh, yes, fast burst of energy and strength. Uh, I, they have strong. I definitely think they're strong, for sure. I think they have a lot of strength. I don't necessarily agree that they're fast, though. So maybe in that, there lies there lies an opportunity and there lies an advantage. But they have, look, they have very good players. They're very technical players. But I don't think I don't think they're an explosive team, in my opinion, at least, from everything that I've seen. They do have, I could say they have moments here and there of explosiveness, but it's not something that I find to be very consistent. They beat these K. Fenner, more technical. We'll have to work hard to ensure they don't dominate possession and give them too much space. I think, I think, I think that's very accurate, um, in, in my opinion. The club has had, as a Libyakos, we have had some, some good success in the last few years against Turkish teams. I I really not that that really means anything now because this Fenerbahce team is is better, but we have had better success against Turkish teams in the last few years. So it's going to be a tough game. This that's that's all that's what we can say. Anytime you have, even if it's veteran, very veteran in that way, star power, you but you pay for that star power because they can do things. Ed and Jekko, I've watched a lot of this guy play. If he wants to be there, he will he will be a threat. I remember in his it was like his last season for Roma, this guy was garbage in Serie A. He was garbage when playing in Italy. But man, Champions League, oh, 
is a different guy. If that Ed and Jekko shows up, the Champions League Ed and Jekko, oh boy, that's going to be difficult. Anybody pisses him off and he has a reason to score goals on you, he'll be difficult. But if it's if it's Ed and Jekko, the casual Ed and Jekko that doesn't really care, uh, he's a player that I believe we can can one player at least that we can contain. There's still others that are difficult that we will have to worry about. All right, guys, we're 46 minutes in here. I'm running solo, so I'm going to go ahead. I know it's late for you guys in Greece as well, past midnight. So we have a solar eclipse to look forward to tomorrow. So excited about that. But let's get into it. We're going to get into it. Man of the match coach is great. So for me, I'm not going to think about this too hard. For me, I'm going to pick Stefan Jovetic. Uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's difficult. I mean, he had El Kabi scored the second goal. I think Jovetic would have had the assist for it if I remember correctly. The guy's just his technique on the ball. I just love watching him play. He is so smooth on the ball. He's got such a lovely touch. I mean, I I really think, especially since Mendy Libar has gotten so much out of him recently, you have to re-sign this guy. There's no way. There's no way you don't. You have to. I mean, like we have to, if we want to build on the success that we've had in the second half of the season, or at least the part of the second half of the season since Mendilibar, you have to keep this core of players. You, you know, you have to keep these guys that are on loan. Andre Horta. You know, we have to keep Podence. You have to keep these guys. You re-sign El Kabi. You activate his 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 option for another year. You have to keep these guys here and build off of that. You have to. David Carmo, you figure out how to keep him. You figure out if you can make a deal there. You can't make a deal, fine. But you you have to figure out how to keep the, some of these guys. You have to. And then you supplement what you don't have. But Steven Jovetic for me is, I mean, he's been he's been great for a, for a while, for a few games. So links up well, just so creative, just a lovely touch. So I'm not going to think too hard on it. I think first guess there is, is probably the correct one. And we have some polls running on, on Instagram, so I'll, I'll check that out as well, plus you guys. So Coach is great. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with an A, I know A, A plus even. I know some people maybe wanted other players to come off sooner, but five to one. How do you not, how do you not give this guy an A plus? It's impossible. It's impossible. So we're going to check out and see what you guys voted. So in the poll that's running right now for the live show, uh, 84% in favor of Jovetic, 10% in favor of El Kabi, 5% in favor of Hesse, and then there was other, and the only 2% for other. And if you said other, don't forget to tell us who you think was deserving of Man of the Match. So we also put the poll up on Instagram, 72% in favor of Jovetic, and we've got hundreds of votes there. Uh, did we put it up on Twitter? Let's check it out. I don't think we put this up on Twitter, but uh, or X rather. Gosh, I feel like. No, we did. And Jovetic, 84%. So any platform, it looks like everybody pretty much is in, in agreement that Steven Jovetic is the man of the match, followed sort of by El Kabi. So it's... I don't think it was very difficult today, <laughs> at least in that respect. So really quick, before we go ahead and start the sign off here, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit that like button. Over 200 of you passed th have, have passed through with a, over 130 still in the lobby. You guys are still hanging in there, and we've got about 30 likes. Hit that like button. If you're on X, Right now, it looks like there's a lot of you joining us from X. If you are on X, consider coming over to YouTube. Consider following us, subscribing, and interacting with us there. Either way, we appreciate wherever you're following us from. Thank you so much for doing so. And we look forward to having you all, especially if you're new, having you in the community and continuing to interact with you. Well, guys, that's all that I have for you today. We're going to have plenty of content for you during the week on socials. We're going to have plenty of reviews and analyses for Fenerbahce as we kickstart and get ready for the quarterfinals of the, uh, the UEFA Europa Conference League, as it's actually called. 
And this is huge because for the first time in our history, we could end up in the semifinals of a European Cup for the football team. Huge. This is huge. Huge opportunity. It is not going to be easy by any stretch. Fenerbahce is a better Fenerbahce than we played before. We're going to approach this the same way we've approached every game before, most likely with Medellibar. We're going to see what happens. We support the team. First leg is home. No away fans because Fenerbahce is serving a ban. But we also don't get away fans in um, away at Fenerbahce for us, which I find to be absurd and bizarre. The Turkish police requested it. They said that they they were concerned about security. And, and I'll be honest with you guys. I do find this a little bit ridiculous because they are serving a suspension for away fans, but now we're serving one too. So all of a sudden the playing field kind of gets leveled for them. I find the whole thing to be quite ridiculous, but it is what it is. Very excited for that match. I hope you guys are too. And don't forget, we're going to play them twice before playoff football returns because the, the game against Balk, which should have been next week, is has been postponed. So all ahead to, to, to Fenerbahce. I almost said all ahead to Balk. All ahead to Fenerbahce. All ahead to the quarterfinals. And hopefully this club can deliver us to a semifinal. That would be incredible. It would be absolutely incredible. So don't forget to check out on socials. Giveaway, once we hit 7,000 on Instagram, we will be doing a merch giveaway from our new merch lineup. We are excited, and we are going to be giving away some fun stuff. You can check it out as well. We hope you like the merch. We hope that you consider supporting us in that way as well. It is going to be a lot of new stuff coming to Gate 7 International. We are super excited to do all of this, we are super excited to, to to level up again, as we like to say. So really fun. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, especially if you made it this far. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. And we will see you for hopefully some Fenerbahce pre-match analysis. And if not, if we can't get that squared away, we will definitely see you after the Fenerbahce game. Oh,